Hello and welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, today what I want to talk about is data mapper patterns and more specifically conditions. All right, so I'm putting together a series of videos much like this with quick tips on how to use some of the features that are found in the new data mapper, which is currently in preview as of this recording. For this video, we're going to talk about a very common concept in data mapper data transformations called conditions. And when dealing with conditions, we need to chain a couple functions in order to accomplish our goal. So for example, we've got equals plus if and equals plus if else. Now, naturally, there's going to be other scenarios or variants of this, but uh, this will give you a sense of how you go ahead and accomplish conditional mapping in the new data mapper. Just as a, a quick recap, here is some information about the modern data mapper, which is in public preview, as I mentioned. I will link a, to this video uh, in the description. I had previously recorded a video on this particular topic. But uh, in summary, just a quick summary, what do I can I expect with the, the new data mapper? So we do have support at this point for XML and JSON. You can use those interchangeably, XML to JSON, JSON to XML, etc. We do have a manual test experience. You'll see that up here. Uh, we'll see that a little bit in this video as well. Drag and drop experience. You know, you can go ahead and drag, you know, one node over to another node. We've got pre-built functions, which is definitely part of the driver for this particular session. We also have map checker. This is just a, a little a tool that's going to help validate your mapping configuration. And if you've got type mismatches and things of that nature, that's where you'll start to see those warnings or errors emerge. And then last but not least for now, this is a VS Code only experience. So you go ahead and install the data mapper extension, which is part of the marketplace, and then you'll have the access to this tool. So that's a, a brief overview. Like I said, go ahead, check out the full video. I think it's like close to 20 minutes long and uh, you'll get more fidelity on what's coming and what's currently available. Feedback, uh, once again, if you are using the this data mapper in preview this is the place to go if you've got any feedback concerns issues bugs to report this is the place where you go ahead and do so and uh, the team is actively monitoring this feed you will see when things are uh, basically in progress and when they've been fixed and so this is the best way to communicate that feedback to the team all right, so demo number one, the scenario that we're, we have, we've got is we've got a source node called plant, we've got a destination node called plant, and we want to basically manipulate the value that's gonna be passed when plant is equal to 71,000. And when plant is equal to 71,000, we're then going to go ahead and pass in 71,000 dash A. This is a completely arbitrary rule, but I think this is, is quite common in data transformation. So I think you can probably relate to it. Now, in order to achieve this goal, we need to use two different functions, equal and if. And so the equal is, is gonna allow us to do the check to say, hey, does this plant value equal 71,000? It'll then go ahead and return or output a Boolean value. We'll then connect that output to the input of our if and then the if will say, okay, when this is true, what value do you want to pass to plants? Now, we're going to hard code a value, but we could just as easily uh, pass in a direct connection as well and pass a source value as well. So let's go ahead, let's flip over to VS Code and let's uh, see this in action. So here's VS Code. This is kind of the, the goal that we have. This is what we want to be able to complete and so let's just go ahead and delete these values just so that you can see this experience just from the the beginning okay so we've got our source schema in scope we've got our destination schema in scope uh, this is actually json this is xml not that that really matters in this situation but we need to be able to apply our mapping rule on this plant so what we can do, and, and this is how sort of I like to do it, especially when you have multiple functions that you need to configure, I would like to, I would, would suggest just starting here and just adding them to the canvas, then go ahead and configure them. So what we can start with is equals, just go ahead and, and type that in, click it, it'll show up here. Then you can go ahead and search for if, and then it'll show up here. Now we can start to configure these values. 
So what we do want to do is we want to have our plant value being evaluated. And so we can drag this line up over here or we can just go ahead and select it from the drop down. So there's, there's our, our, our equals. Now we need to do a value check. And in this case, we're gonna provide a custom value. And what we can do is just put a string and then type in 71,000 and then, and then uh, sort of hit enter. And at that point, we've got this now configured. Now what we can do is we can now go ahead and click on our if condition and then we'll go ahead and select our output which is the is equal and when that is true we can go ahead and then provide that custom value which we had said was going to be 71,000-a and then we'll close that and we'll hit enter and then what we can do is drag that output over to plant and we can go ahead and save. Now what's really important here is that you can have the code view open and I would recommend doing it because this is a way that you can validate sort of what you're building sort of as you go you can go ahead and see that sort of pretty much live and uh, and then be able to sort of know if you've got any sort of bugs. Now one thing you've noticed we've got some collisions here in terms of these functions uh, this is something that we were we are going to fix we're going to give you control in terms of how you want to rearrange these um, temporarily you know just to kind of work around this click up a level and then click back in and you'll see that it is formatted uh, you know appropriately so let's go ahead let's just make sure we've got our map saved then we can go ahead and test this out so we've got our sample message here we've got our plant value let's go ahead and find it it is right here and remember when our value is 71,000, we wanna output 71,000-A. So let's go ahead, let's click test. And then sure enough, we have 71,000-A. So just to make sure there's no smoke and mirrors here, uh, let's just change this to say 91. And in this case, we shouldn't see anything mapped because we've got that condition. It was only when we've got plant of 71,000. So it's now we can see that it's, it's actually gone. So if we come back here, and put plant 71,000, hit test, uh, it's back. So that is a, sort of a brief demo of scenario one. Let's now flip over and discuss scenario two. Okay, so scenario two is kind of a variant of what we just showed. Like we showed you if, basically the if condition, now we're gonna uh, evaluate if else, but sort of concept is similar. Uh, here we're in a different node, a different part of the map, and we've got a source node called STCK, I'm gonna just call it stick for short, stick type. And uh, we've got a stick type on the destination. Now, when stick type is F, we want to then assign a value of F-0 to stick type. But then else, we can then go ahead and map stick type from the source directly to the destination. So this is kind of a cool feature. If you've done BizTalk in the past, this isn't something that exists in BizTalk. You would always have to map kind of the inverse. So you would always have to do like your if condition, and then you would have to do kind of the negative or the inverse of that condition to get the else basically working. Here it's pretty cool because we have if else, and then we've got a value if true that gets mapped, and then a value if false that gets mapped. So uh, this is kind of neat, neat. This is new, this is neat. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Let's go ahead, flip over to VS Code. Okay, we're over in VS Code. This is ultimately what we want to be able to build, but let's go ahead and delete it like last time so that we're starting from scratch. Uh, once again, we're gonna go into our functions and uh, I like to sort of get these on the canvas then configure them, but sort of, uh, you know, do it however you want. So let's go ahead, let's get equals again, drag that. And also don't like we've got not equal, we've got less than or equal, we've got greater or equal, these will all evaluate to some sort of Boolean. So all any of these can be used in conjunction with if or with if else. So I do wanna make sure that that's clear as well. So then we've got, uh, let's search for if, and then we've got this if else. Let's go ahead, let's drag that over. Once again, let's start with equals. Uh, the node that we wanna map is stick type. So I'm just gonna drag this just to show you that approach. And then the value we wanna check for I'm going to go ahead and select F and then we can go into our F if else. And so here we're going to 
say that it's the first input is going to be our is equal action or function and then we're going to go ahead and provide a value so if this is true we're going to go ahead and set f dash zero and then else what we can now do is map directly this will be the the stick type and from there we can go ahead and output over to stick type and once again hit save also you don't know the code view you know it's being built out as we're building out this map so that is something you know to be mindful of and it actually becomes quite helpful as you start to learn sort of the underlying sort of um, design of the, the map or what's happening under the hood. So this is nice that it provides some, some visibility. Once again, you know, if you've got some uh, collisions with your functions on the canvas, just go ahead and click up a level and then click back down and then you'll see a, a better representation of it. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, this is something that uh, we're going to give you more control over. So, so not to worry. Let's go and test this map. We'll use the same inputs. Uh, what we're interested in is, is this field here, the stick type, it's currently set to F. So we should see it being mapped as F-0. Let's go back and change this. And let's just say it's gonna be K. And in this case, what we would expect is that uh, K will get mapped straight across. It'll be our else condition in this case. So there we go, it's set to K. So yeah, that's the demo. Uh, hopefully that helps uh, explain a couple of these new features. And uh, yeah, interested in knowing what other scenarios you might be interested in as well. Just a reminder, if you are not following me on Twitter, you can go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Naturally, you are on YouTube. Like, subscribes, comments, welcome. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.